Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for this Gettysburg College pre-law advising presentation. We have a great group of pre presenters here tonight. We have uh, two of our great pre-law advisors, a uh, few students, and we're so excited to have a member of our class of 2020 to join us um, as well. So um, I'm Courtney Best and I'm one of our senior associate directors of admissions and I will be here for the whole whole presentation and I'll be in the Q&A. So if you have any admissions questions, I'm here to answer those. Please do use the Q&A. Um, we will have time at the end for your questions. And I am gonna turn it over to Scott Bottery. Hi everyone, thanks so much for attending this evening. Um, just wanted to thank you for your time and welcome you all. So uh, I wanted to start by saying that both Tiffany and I are the pre-law advisors here at Gettysburg College. And we have a fairly liberal open door policy in that if you ever have any questions about pre-law advising at Gettysburg College or Gettysburg College in general, please don't hesitate for a minute to reach out to us with questions. So with that said, I'm gonna go through um, <clears throat> some of the key points of pre-law advising here at Gettysburg. And along the way, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat and Courtney will uh, help handle those and uh, I'll get started here. So one of the most uh, frequently asked questions that Tiffany and I get here at Gettysburg is whether or not we have a pre-law major at the college. And the answer is an emphatic no. And I say it's emphatic because um, if you're interested in going to law school, majoring in pre-law is not important. In fact, it's one of the least important things you could do. <clears throat> Uh, and that's the case for a number of reasons, uh, one of which is the ABA says, look, it doesn't matter what folks major in, uh, they can major in whatever uh, interests them most. Uh, it doesn't increase your chances of admissions to law school. You can major in uh, one of the hard sciences, biology, you can major in English, you can major in poli sci, whatever interests you the most, that's really what matters. And that's what we emphasize here at Gettysburg College. So you don't need to take uh, classes or majors in order to signal to admissions committees that you know this is what you wanna do with your life. What you want to signal to admissions committees is that you're serious about your academic studies and that you're good at it. You're a good student. And so with that said, we really do stress um, the importance of, of majoring in whatever it is interests you the most. And it just so it might happen to be government or public policy or something that overlaps considerably with, with uh, law school related uh, courses, but it's not a necessary ingredient. And so that's why we don't have this major in our course, but we do have a lot of other really great things uh, involved here that we do think give us um, a distinct advantage. Our commitment here is basically a one-on-one -on -one guidance such that you're not just a number to us. We help you through the entire phase of the application process from your first day on campus until that last day on campus when you walk across the stage. Um, we help you along the way. It's one-on-one -on -one and it's personalized. So you get uh, our attention, meaningful attention, when you're choosing what schools to, to apply to, when you're trying to figure out which letters of recommendations are best to seek, and also your personal statements, probably one of the most um, difficult aspects of the application process. We're here to help you along the way. And this sort of one-on-one -on -one attention, it's not just while you're here, it continues beyond college. Uh, Tiffany and I get um, emails from students in law school, former alumni, but also we get um, questions from folks who are in fact out of law school wanting to reconnect and have questions about their professional resume and things like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, generally speaking, this is what our pre-law program looks like every year. Uh, pre-law orientation kicks off the year. We have on-campus speakers throughout the year. Those are anything ranging from current law students who wanna come back and talk to students, uh, practicing attorneys, formal alumni, on, and policymakers who want to come back and talk to our students. <clears throat> Excuse me. We also have a pre law admissions panel, which is really helpful. We bring in admissions officers from area schools 
um, ranging from as far south as Richmond to usually up to Boston. They come to campus and they hold a panel and they have a Q&A session uh, with students and they answer their questions and they give them kind of best practices. We also have internship and externship guidance and Tiffany is a really good resource for this. <clears throat> We have some suggested courses. And again, I can't stress this enough. These are only suggested courses. This is not a mandatory course list that you have to take. Um, Pre-law is, is unlike pre-med, whereas pre-med, they want you to take very specific courses and get certain grades in those courses. Uh, Pre-law, again, you can major in whatever you want. Um, just show that you're a serious, rigorous student. But in order to test the waters a little bit, you might wanna take some of these courses. Um, logic, it's a philosophy course, constitutional law, philosophy of law, uh, American government, critical thinking, and legal analysis. And the reason I put the asterisk by the legal analysis course is this is really the only course that I'm really going to suggest to students if they're dead set on going to law school, if they're convinced this is for them and they're going to do it. This is a course that you should probably take during your senior year. And this is not a course designed to help you get into law school. This is a course designed to help you thrive once in law school. So you'll get to your 1L year head and shoulders above your classmates, having already experienced legal writing paradigms, citation styles, and things like that. It's a really fun course. But again, that's safe for your senior year when you're sure that you're going to go. Um, for planning purposes, for your first and second years, what we generally tell folks is to get your Gettysburg uh, curriculum out of the way. Take a wide range of courses. Figure out what it is you're really passionate about. This is your opportunity to do that. Uh, between your second and third year, you should probably want to look for a shadowing experience or a relevant internship experience. For your third year, uh, spring semester, this is when you really want to buckle down and get uh, into the LSAT studying phase. I say this to everyone, but the LSAT isn't really uh, an IQ test. I know really smart folks who didn't perform well on it because they took it for granted. And so you wanna get started on it early, prepping on it, and you wanna probably take the first exam over the summer between your junior and senior year. <clears throat> and then the fall semester of your senior year, that's when you start compiling all your materials, like your letters of recommendation, your, um, you start working on drafts of your personal statement, things like that. And then if you can, um, and you're serious about it, try to register for legal analysis in the spring semester. It'll be really helpful. And this is a course that's not offered widely. Um, it's a course that I've taught at R1 institutions, other liberal arts institutions. And again, it's designed to catapult students into the upper echelon of their first year law class. Here's a look at a, a snapshot of what our current application data look like. This is just the average uh, LSAT score and GPA score. <clears throat> Excuse me. The number of applications per student is right now about eight. Average number of acceptances is at about four. The past three or four years running, we've had 100% acceptance rate. Um, personally, I don't think that's a meaningful statistic. I think the more meaningful statistic, if you ask me, is this bit here, where we're at a greater than 75% scholarship rate. So not only are our students getting accepted, they're getting accepted to good schools with good scholarships. And I think that's really meaningful. Um, Tiffany, did you wanna take over for the extracurricular and externship and uh, uh, internship discussion? Absolutely. So um, as Scott said, I work in encouragement as, as um, wearing many different hats, but pre-law advising is one of those. And so in, in my role, I do work quite closely with the pre-law club, as well as the mock trial. Um, and uh, Professor Bowdery works specifically with Moot Court as well. So um, if you have any questions about those organizations, you can certainly reach out. But a lot of it is um, particularly for pre-law. It's educationally focused, learning about different practice areas of law. Uh, sometimes they organize, whether it's conference calls, webinars, or they invite um, alumni or parents or other folks that they're connected to to come in and talk about their, their work in, in the legal field. Uh, they might 
organize visitations to, to local law schools um, and sit in in classes or a mock class. So there's a lot of opportunity through the organizations to, to get involved. Um, mock trial, if you're familiar with that, they, they do participate. They've been doing very well um, over the past couple of years, increasing in, in the competitions and gaining awards and, and statutes. So they, they hope to continue some of those pieces as well. And then the Law Journal of the Liberal Arts. Um, I, I think probably Professor Vaudry can speak to this a little bit more than, than I can. Um, he started this group, but there's opportunities for students to get involved this in this organization as well. Um, last year, we had the symposium speaker um, from Amherst College. You can see his photo there too. Um, and as, as it states, they're hiring between three to six editors in academic year. So it gives you some practical experience in that way as well. And, and certainly more events to, to come on campus and, and open to the entire community. And so um, as we mentioned before, we do have some guests um, with us as well. And so we wanted to be able to, to give them some time to share their experience, um, as well as Ben Ponce, who's just the recent graduate from our class of 2020. Um, and so these are our folks. I will allow Miranda potentially to pop on first to introduce yourself. Yeah, I can totally do that. Um, I'm Miranda Zamora, as it says on there. I'm a sophomore here at Gettysburg College. I'm majoring right now in po um, political science and minoring in Spanish. Um, Professor Bottery is my political science advisor. Definitely recommend him, love him. But um, yeah, I am involved with the um, pre-law advising, obviously. I did a little bit of our pre-law club on campus, which basically when you go to that, you do different things such as like learning about the law and talking about things happening with the law and also a little bit of LSAT prep, which is definitely helpful. Um, I haven't done it as much this year, a little bit more last year just because of um, how busy online classes and everything are. But I think with pre-law, the main thing that I'm involved with is um, mock trial as it said a few slides before i'm currently the senate prep for mock trial and i am also one of the um, competing attorneys for this year for the plaintiff side in our civil case um and it's it's definitely a lot of fun it's something that i did not have as an experience in high school i know some people do and my high school didn't have a team until about our senior year so once i got to gettysburg it was my first time participating in it um, as a freshman, I was originally originally put on the team as a non-competing member and then bumped up to a competing member once um, someone ended up dropping out for that year. Last year, I was a prosecuting attorney and really like it, it's a fake trial, but it really does give you a lot of the real experience. Like I've learned how to introduce evidence into um, um, into a case. I've learned how to do objection battles, which is so much fun, how to do a direct examination and a cross-examination. And if you do do mock trial, personally for me, cross-examinations are the most fun. It's a little bit more scary, but um, it's definitely a good experience and it gives you a lot to learn about um, trials in kind of like a more fun way. And we normally, um, in person, we would do competitions in the fall with invitationals, which don't really count for anything. It just gives us an idea of what competitions are gonna look like. And then we have our regionals in the spring. Last year at invitationals, we went undefeated, which was definitely fun. And then we did regionals in the spring where um, I, we did pretty well in it. And then a few of our, our attorneys and our um, witnesses did win a few awards, um, but it's a fun time. It's a great experience. And you honestly learn a lot about the law within it. So definitely join. Thank you, Miranda. Very good. Um, Anna. Hi, um, I'm Anna. I'm a senior. I'm a political science major um, and a peace and justice studies minor. Um, I decided to apply to law school pretty late in the game. I'd say, if I'm being completely honest, I wasn't sure if I wanted to apply spring of my junior year, but it really was something that I kind of fell into kind of naturally because of the environment at Gettysburg and because as um, Professor Bottery and, um, was saying, it's a very individualized experience. And so you get kind of that one-on-one -on -one advice and that kind of really solidified that this was what I wanted to do. Um, so yeah, I'm actually, I'm an editor, article and notes editor with the Law Journal of the Liberal Arts. And then I'm also the editor of the Gettys Virgin, um, which is the campus news publication. Um, so really my experience with pre-law advising has been awesome. I can't recommend it enough. I really feel like 
I knew what to expect going into my senior year, even though I didn't really make the decision to take the LSAT until the spring, I felt like I was um, had more than enough time to prepare. So yeah, it was just, I, I really um, recommend getting involved with any sort of pre-law events um, that are being organized at the college and hopefully they're in person soon, but yes, that's me. <laughs> Uh, Anna, before we leave, I think you have an announcement to make, and that's you just got your first acceptance today into law school. Can you tell us where? I did get my first acceptance into law school today. <laughs> I got into George Washington Law, um, so that was exciting news. Um, I applied early in the game, and that was because Professor Bottery, too, a told me to apply early in the game. So I highly recommend that because it's nice to have an acceptance this early on. <laughs> and a pretty nice scholarship to boot, right? Yeah, that was also great. I didn't know those um, scholarship statistics, but it's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think it speaks to our students and it's much deserved. Congratulations, Anna. Thank you. Absolutely, congratulations, well done. Um, Abby, you are our next on the, on the screen here. Hi friends, my name is Abby Hauer. I'm also a senior here at Gettysburg College. I am pursuing a double major in mathematical economics and public policy with minors in political science and peace and justice studies, which is a mouthful. And I had a hunch I wanted to pursue law school ever since I was young. Um, when I was little, I didn't talk very much, but then when I started talking, I didn't stop. And my parents always joked that they saw me being a lawyer just because I talk a lot. So I kind of took that to heart and had an idea I wanted to pursue law school. But that was not one of the driving reasons why I came to Gettysburg, but it has definitely been very, very beneficial that I did come to Gettysburg. I had an idea my sophomore year, I would say, when I took my intro to public policy course that law school was for me. And I started keeping it in the back of my mind as I went forward when I had a lot of friends who were economics majors, mathematical economics majors who were deciding to pursue master's degrees and PhDs. I always had in the back of my mind, I wanted to pursue that jurist doctorate. And I made up my mind right before my junior year. And right before I studied abroad in the spring of my junior year, I reached out to Professor Pottery just to make sure I was in a current good state of the game. And he said, yes, just, you know, do a little bit of LSAT prep while you're abroad, just very sparsely. And then when you get back, really crunch down on it and take the LSAT the summer before senior year this past summer. And that's what I did. And I took it once, it went very well. And he was phenomenal helping me find affordable uh, study prep for that, which was really great. And then he's helped me along the way with pursuing um, scholarships and applications, and as well as working on that statement of purpose. That's a very important part of the application. And I should note that I also took advantage of a lot of the Center of Career Engagement opportunities throughout my time. I did two job shadows with Gettysburg alums who are current attorneys, one in real estate law and one who is a parent actually that works for the Maryland Department of Labor. She's an attorney there and that really helped solidify the law school decision. And so now I'm in a similar boat as Anna, waiting to hear from those law schools, but I really just had a great support network through every step of the way. And I'm just really grateful for that and know that they'll be there for me, you know, now. And it's great to see that they're gonna be there after the fact too, when I graduate as well. So Abby, you're being a little coy. You've gotten into a whole bunch of law schools and scholarships into every single one of them. And they're really great schools. So again, congratulations to you. And I hate to put you on the spot like this in the middle of a webinar. So purely hypothetical, if one day you were to run for president, what would your slogan be? Oh my goodness. If I were to run for president, well, I have three slogans, but the primary one is how are you doing America, which is a play on my last name. And then I have my two secondary are power, power and power to the people. And I may or may not trademark them, we'll see. That was well done. It's like you thought about this before. No, that just came up right now. I just popped in my head. Thanks, Abby. All right, I love it, I love it. Um, so last, but certainly not least, um, Ben, I'll, I'll allow you to introduce yourself as well. well. I'm afraid I don't have any extemporaneous sloganeering to do, but uh, in any case, uh, my name is Ben Ponce. I am a 2020 graduate uh, of Gettysburg College. 
I'm currently uh, in Manchester, England uh, on a Fulbright scholarship uh, at the University of Manchester where the local time is 12.22 a.m. Happy to be with you. Um, I uh, am currently, de I, I deferred uh, law school for a year, um, partly because I won a Fulbright scholarship and partly because the law school that uh, I was uh, enrolled in went online and I didn't really want any part of that. Um, but I will be attending Harvard Law School uh, next year. Um, and, and uh, you know, I came to the law school game a little late as well. Uh, didn't really make a firm decision that this, that this was what I was going to do until um, until probably about last Thanksgiving or so after I took the LSAT for a second time and did a little better than I did the first time. But uh, I was well prepared uh, for being able to turn around applications pretty quickly by some of the terrific advising that um, I received not just in the pre-law program, but really, really throughout Gettysburg College. If I had a general comment to prospective Gettysburg College students, it would be not to underestimate the accessibility of the faculty. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I have friends at other larger schools uh, who maybe had one or two faculty members they'd feel comfortable asking for recommendation letters in the last 12 months. I counted a few uh, months ago that I had a total of, I think, 11 different members of the Gettysburg College faculty uh, serve as recommenders or those sorts of things, uh, including the past and present presidents of the college, which I don't think happens at a lot of places, um, which is to say that there are plenty of opportunities to have a lot of mentors at the college. Um, in terms of what I did on campus, uh, like Anna, I was the editor of the Gettys Virgin. We have a nice little pipeline going of Gettys Virgin editors to law school. Anna will be the third consecutive one. Um, but in addition, I was the drum major of the Bullets Marching Band. Um, and I was involved with a handful of campus jobs and did a handful of internships that I'm happy to talk about if anyone's that interested in the Q&A. But with that, I will punt it back over to Scott or to Tiffany or whomever's taking over here. Thanks a bunch, everybody. So the one thing I wanted to close on was um, our planning moving forward. And we're working on a legal studies minor. And again, I just wanna be very clear, the point of this minor is not meant to be uh, um, a avenue to law school. It's meant to study the law as a liberal art in the liberal arts tradition. Um, I've been talking closely with a good colleague of mine at Amherst and they have a similar program there where they treat the study of law as a liberal art, not as a professional school preparation uh, area of study. And that's really what we're looking for. Um, that's really what we're looking to develop in the legal studies minor. So things have been slightly delayed because of the COVID pandemic, but we're still on track uh, to put it to a faculty vote next semester. So in the spring semester, and this is going to be a cross disciplinary uh, minor. It will span political science, history, sociology, English, philosophy, and then you can petition to include any other course that you think fits into that minor. So I want you to keep your eyes open for that too. And then finally, I'll close and just say that um, we've been uh, very lucky with the quality of students that we get at Gettysburg College. I don't think it's necessarily a testament to the pre-law advising. More than anything, I think it's a testament to the quality of students that choose to come here. I think they're great students uh, and it bears this out. These are just a sampling of the, the law schools that our students have gotten into in the past five years. Um, I ran out of room, to be honest, and why I didn't include some was just a matter of time. Um, there are really good schools that our students are getting into on scholarship, and we're really excited about their future. Um, they've been extremely productive, extremely rewarding working with them. I think it's what makes my job one of the best jobs in the world is getting to work with students like this. Um, and so if you choose to come here, uh, I can promise you that you'll have one-on-one -on -one advising. We'll, uh, we'll shoot you straight. We'll aim you the right way. Um, we'll give you honest advice and help you succeed as best you can. So with that, I think I'm gonna kick it over to Courtney and see if we have any questions or if we just wanna sign off. All right, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, I am just so impressed. Um, 
I, I loved our students before, but I love all of you even more now. And um, I want to go back to my Gettysburg experience <laughs> and have that pre-law advising program. Um, so uh, please feel free to use the Q&A um, and put any of your questions that you have um, in that. And uh, we'll be able to answer that as a group. And I did want to add a fun fact. One of our alums is actually the Director of Admissions at UC Hastings Law. So um, that is also a nice connection to have on the West Coast. But um, I see one question um, that was just sent in. It says, what is the coursework like with a political science major and a Spanish minor? So I think we can also generalize this and say, you know, what is it like to be a student at Gettysburg and what is the coursework like? So Miranda, this is actually exactly your setup, right? Is is there, can you comment on the coursework for poli-sci Spanish minor? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as far as combining the two together, it is definitely a lot, a lot, a lot of reading, especially now that I've noticed with Spanish. So basically how Spanish works is none of the classes start counting until you start taking a 301 level. And that's just what I started this semester. Um, so you, it definitely puts your work in because by then you're at a challenging level of Spanish and with the political science classes right now, um, specifically right now I'm taking Professor Battery's con law class. Um, it is a lot of reading and a lot of analyzing of different articles and stuff, both in English and Spanish, obviously, with how I'm doing it. Um, not to deter you from that class, whatever. I love it. Um, but it, it's I, I think with any combination here at Gettysburg, you're, you have your work in for you. You know, your professors really want you to succeed and they make sure that you have the work level that, um, you know, is gonna get you to that level. As far as Spanish and political science specifically for me, um, it, it's something that I can handle. I always like a challenge though, um, but it, it's, it's fun and it's definitely challenging at times, but I feel like I'm learning what I need to learn and in a path where I need to be. Thanks, Miranda. One thing I, I would add is that, you know, one thing that uh, Tiffany, I, Tiffany and I spend a lot of time on is cultivating these relationships with these law schools. And the relationship that we have, um, not only between us and them, um, but between what they know about our students, I think is really meaningful. So when they see a Gettysburgian apply in their stack of applications that are 100 high, hundreds high, um, they get excited and they've told us exactly that. They get excited when they see a Gettysburgian application. They know what they're gonna get. And so, yeah, it's rigorous coursework here at Gettysburg. Um, that's a good thing, in my opinion. We just yeah. had another question come in about the peace and justice studies minor. Um, what is it? And is it just a common focus among pre-law students? So I think Anna can talk to that, is that right? Yes, I can, I can speak to that. Um, I'm a Peace and Justice Studies minor, and I think the reason why I chose to make a minor in Peace and Justice Studies was a lot of the coursework that I'd done for the first three years of my time at Gettysburg kind of just fit pretty well into Peace and Justice Studies, and a lot of the courses that I were taking that were I was taking that were pretty interdisciplinary, ended up fulfilling a lot of the course requirements that I needed for that minor. And then I ended up having to take, I think I'm taking one more philosophy class in the spring of my senior year. So it just ended up being um, something that I care about. And I also have done some work with the Center for Public Service, which is another really great organization, distinctive program on, on campus. and. Um, through that I was involved in dialogue groups and really thinking about social justice and so it just seemed like I wanted to pursue it and um, I think you'll see and you'll find at Gettysburg that just in the way that Professor Bader is talking about the the legal studies minor that hopefully you all will have <laughs> access to um, it's not it's not really difficult to kind of find your way as long as you are talking to the right people and reaching out and um, people are just really willing to help you. And if, I just also wanted to say one thing about what Professor Baudry said um, a while back about the uh, admissions officers liking Gettysburg students. Um, I don't think that's just, I think my experience so far with applying has kind of reflected that, which has been exciting because I had an interview, an alumni interview a few weeks back, and the guy who interviewed me was like, oh, I love Gettysburg students. Like I hadn't, you know, I've been interviewing them for years and one of my colleagues went to Gettysburg College. So I know that this, it's a really great liberal arts institution for, you know, future lawyers and people who want to be in the field. So that is 
it's pretty awesome. I wanted to just mention that. And we just got a, another question. Anna, I'm sorry to keep you on a little bit more, but um, someone was asking how your uh, involvement in the Center for Public Service has kind of helped with your career path, if it has at all. Um, I guess it has, you know, I, I like to say that a lot of things at Gettysburg that I kind of fell into have helped with my decision to go to law school. I think really it helps more with my, um, my work with the Gettys Virgin and the news publication because I started writing for the the social justice blog that the Center for Public Service has and through that I actually met Ben um, and interviewed for the opinions editor position and that I didn't have like a, a pre law internship really my at the end of my sophomore year, but I did have an editorial internship and so the writing experience, um, I think kind of reflects a lot of what you know future law schools or law students want to do. So that, that was kind of my path. And I think everyone can have a different one. And I'm glad that I didn't necessarily have to know I wanted to be a lawyer when I came to Gettysburg, I just kind of did what I was interested in. So I would recommend really kind of feeling it out, do what you want to do. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with, I would agree with Anna in that um, what law admissions committees are looking for is not that, you know, single-minded individual with blinders on and the only thing in front of them is law school. They want to see a well-rounded individual. So somebody who does more than just pre-law classes, somebody who does more than just, um, you know, legal intern internships. They want to see somebody who's uh, truly a well-rounded three-dimensional individual. And that's something we'll always uh, stress in our advising sessions. I have a question for actually all of the panelists, and I was hoping um, this is kind of two parts. One, if you can go back, students, I don't know if you want to go back to your senior selves in high school, looking at all these colleges and universities and kind of give a little of advice as um, as students are trying to choose where to apply and where they ultimately want to go. Are there things, uh, bits of advice, uh, questions you think they should be asking as they're looking at a variety of large schools and also small liberal arts schools like Gettysburg? And um, also Tiffany and Scott, if you would, would also like to give a little bit of advice um, on this on what they should be looking for. Ben, do you wanna go first on that one? Sure. Uh, yeah, well, my senior year of high school was like four and a half years ago, which seems like an eternity. Uh, but I suppose it was in fact measurable as four and a half years ago. So in any case, uh, yeah, my experience coming to Gettysburg College is probably not the one that um, is most uh, pronounced or most common. I am originally from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which is about an hour and a half east of Gettysburg. And, um, you know, as I started to map out what colleges I was interested in, I put Gettysburg on the list because it was fairly close to home. And I knew by reputation, it was a fairly good school, uh, or that was at least my perception at the time. Um, and so as I started to apply to colleges and, and uh, I visited Gettysburg one time. I have very little memory of that visit, so don't feel that you're missing out if you can't visit in person, I guess. It's a great campus to be, don't get me wrong, but uh, the bottom line is that I kind of chose Gettysburg on a, on a bit of a whim uh, the spring of my senior year, in no small part because we had a marching band, and uh, that was important to me. Um, but the, you know, I, they say, you know, Everything happens for a reason. You know, I think that in, in my case, that the decision to choose Gettysburg over some, to be quite candid with you, uh, so-called higher ranked schools, I think that those rankings are not really what I would spend a lot of time paying attention to if I were you, um, which is not to say that Gettysburg isn't well ranked, to be clear, but what I would look at is the breadth of opportunity that exists to do a lot of things that you think you might be interested in and then within that, the opportunity to hone in on things that you turn out to be interested in at a deeper level. And I found that Gettysburg was kind of a Goldilocks in that way, uh, where there was an opportunity to explore things as diverse as, you know, I accidentally minored in music uh, when I realized that, you know, I was going to have pretty much taken the coursework and had done the lessons and been in the ensembles and 
well, might as well be a music minor as long as I'm at it, uh, you know, to, to being involved with the Eisenhower Institute and all of that stuff. So I think that what I found to be the case at Gettysburg and what I mentioned earlier, um, you know, when I said that there were 11 or 12 faculty members who have written me letters of recommendation, there's, there is no, um, no, Gettysburg is small enough that, you know, there are no real restraints on, uh, you know, there's no, nothing that's going to hold you back from doing everything you're interested in, but it's big enough that there's enough going on that you're not, uh, you know, that you're not constrained um, by a lack of opportunity. So uh, my advice uh, would be choose Gettysburg, I guess. Um, but, but uh, yeah, I don't know. That was, how's that for an extemporaneous why Gettysburg pitch? Abby, what about you? You are from Maryland, Baltimore area, is that correct? I am from Baltimore, go Ravens. Um, so for me, I Gettysburg was the first school I visited and it set the bar very high that schools didn't surpass that I also visited. And I think I visited in total maybe eight schools, uh, undergraduate institutions, some of them being higher ranked like Bennett talked about, some Ivy Leagues and don't let the rank define the school. I think that that's a silly um, thing to be a definitive decision maker. But for me, what drew me to Gettysburg, I would say were two things. One was the sense of community that I felt when I was on my tour and just anything I had participated in through my admissions process. So when I came on my tour, just seeing the tour guide, who I still know to this day, uh, go and just, you know, have brief little interactions with his friends while on the tour, being like, hey, we, we're getting lunch after this, right? All right, cool, see you then. Or, hey, we're going to meet in the lib tonight at eight to study for that test. Yeah, all right, see ya. I loved that. And that really drew me to Gettysburg. And then also having law school and being an adult and a big kid in the back of my head, I my mom was really keen on me asking about where do some of the Gettysburg students end up and with every school I had to ask that question and I'm glad she made me it, it, by the end it became natural and I think it was a worthwhile question just to know where do students go do they go into the workforce where do they go do they go to further their education what are some opportunities in that regard and I remember vividly talking about the pre-law advising on my tour and in my interview with Gettysburg so I would say for the students watching this Similar to what Bennett said, don't let the rank define the school. If you can come and visit, Gettysburg is offering tours right now. And to just find a sense, find your second home. That's what I always like to say. And for me, that was important. And it didn't really hit me how important that was until I came back from abroad because coming back to campus was like coming back home. So that is my why Gettysburg pitch. Thanks, Abby. Miranda. So when looking back at high school, I had a very like one track kind of mind kind of thing. Um, Gettysburg, I'm going to be honest, was at the bottom of my list. It was in a place I'm from Westminster, Maryland, which is like 25 minutes from Gettysburg. So I had been to Gettysburg basically all of my life. For me, it seemed too close to home, but I liked the small campus. Um, I had friends who went there, so I put it on my list to apply. Um, when I was in high school and for as long as I can remember, I wanted to go to William and Mary. That was my dream school. I was like, I'm going to go there. And my family would visit Williamsburg every year since I was like in third grade. And I was like, I'm going to go there. I'm going to study law, all this kind of, um, all that kind of stuff. And I got my recommendation letters and I applied. And that was the one school that I got rejected from. And I was absolutely devastated. Um, so I picked Gettysburg because um, it, it's a prestigious school. My brother also got accepted there. I'm a triplet. Um, so all three of us were applying to schools. Him and I both got accepted there. We got fantastic financial aid. Um, so both of us ended up going there. And I was, I remember for the longest time, I was like, I'm not going to go to Gettysburg. I don't want to go there. And I told my mom, I was like, I'm so upset that I'm going here. And then over the summer before um, I actually went there, I didn't tour until after I accepted. And I accepted the school and then I scheduled a tour and I came up on like this bright sunny day and um, I, I, I instantly fell in love with the campus. It was a small campus. There were the few people that were walking around um, were very nice. They said hi to me. Um, 
I, I, the buildings were beautiful. I love the history of Gettysburg. And I think my favorite thing about Gettysburg is really the community feeling that you get. I remember within my first week, I would be walking around campus. I didn't know people and random people that I didn't know would like stop and say hi to me on the sidewalk and ask how I was doing. And, um, I, I really, I really do love the school. Um, I remember when I didn't get accepted to William and Mary, I was in an internship at that time. And my um, supervisor, I emailed him and I was like, I'm so upset. And he told me, he was like, you know, Miranda, like sometimes things happen for a reason. And sometimes they set you on the path that you didn't know was right for you. And I think he was right in this case. I, I came to Gettysburg. I met people that I love. I love the advisors here. I love the community. And I feel like I'm on a path, like as a sophomore, I feel like I'm on a path that I know where I'm going. I know what classes I need to take and I know what I need to do in order to, you know, go to law school in order to achieve what I want. So, um, the community feeling, it, 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 that's my favorite part. And if you're looking at schools, I would definitely at least recommend putting some smaller schools on your list. You definitely get the attention that you need in your classes and you build some great relationships. That would be my main advice to you. Thanks so much, Miranda. Anna. I guess I'm bringing it home here. Not like there's any pressure or anything. Um, <laughs> I applied to Gettysburg my senior year of high school because my grandpa is from Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, and he loves Gettysburg's campus. And he was like, you're going to love it. You should apply to Gettysburg. Um, I think you'd love the campus. <laughs> and so I applied mostly because my grandpa, I trust him a lot. And also because I really, really wanted to go to a small liberal arts school that was far enough from home that I could be, you know, independent but close enough that I could come home for a weekend if I wanted to. So Gettysburg kind of fit the bill. And I remember I was pretty like indecisive during the whole college admissions process. I know every senior can relate to that probably. It's just a really nerve wracking, anxiety provoking process. Um, and I came to Gettysburg for Accepted Students Day. It was actually raining. <laughs> so I didn't have the same experience as Miranda. But um, I do remember just being really happy um, to see students uh, talk about their professors in such a nice way. Um, at the time, I think I wanted to be a, an English major. So I went and saw, I think, Professor Fee give a, a lecture um, in the English department with one of his, or not a lecture, just kind of just a presentation with one of his students. And the student was actually applying to law school, I'll never forget, because he was like, you know, I think I'm just going to apply to law school because I think it's what I want to do. And I was like, that's kind of cool that you can just decide you want to do this and that there are people who support you. And to kind of I mean, everyone has said this, but one thing that I've never needed for at Gettysburg is people willing to help me. Um, and that is really, really nice. I, I don't know if it's about, I'm from New Jersey and people are just less helpful in general there. I, I love New Jersey, but I think there's something about being at Gettysburg where, I mean, you walk into the office of financial aid and they're like, how can I help you? <laughs> like you walk into the center for global education and they're like, how can I help you? And it's, it's literally, I, I've, had so many pleasant interactions on this campus and um i'm just i'm so happy i came i'm all nostalgic now because i'm a senior and hopefully some of you will feel that way too but i just i hope we can come back in the spring because it really is um a place where like experiential learning opportunities and just like a close-knit community um that is really the the foundation of everything so yeah i'd say come to gettysburg I, i've loved it it's been awesome for me and i hope all of you will enjoy it too if you choose to come here Scott or Tiffany, do you have any last bits of words of wisdom before we sign off? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, everyone else has, has given such great insights into why they chose Gettysburg. And obviously I, I did not go to Gettysburg. I, I am from not too far away. And I do joke that um, I kind of wish I could go back in time and, and I would probably be applying to, to Gettysburg as well. Um, I, I just, I want to echo some of the, the statements that people have said. I think one of the biggest things, I have a couple words, and one of them was community. It really is a community. And I think every single person on this campus, from faculty to staff to administrators, um, and I'm going to include alumni and certainly parents, um, even if they're not your parents or, or guardians, they want to see the students exceed succeed um, and, and moving forward. And so I think everyone is here to, to support. And so 
um, those partnerships that we have across campus, the, the support systems that are here um, to try and help each individual student. That's It comes from the small community that, that is here and you can build those bridges and make those relationships and find um, your place and, and get involved and create something if you don't see it here. There's There are those opportunities. And so um, I, would, I would say that and, and just because of my role in, in career, I do work a lot with our alumni and parent volunteers, um, as I, I think um, Abby had mentioned about taking advantage of some of the, the opportunities in our office, that, that a lot of folks want to give you that experience, um, want to help you try to figure out that pathway. Um, if it's law, great. If it's not, okay, what else is there? Let's explore. So I think we're here to, to support you where you are, when you're ready, um, when you wanna start talking about that and, and whether that's during your undergrad or even after, it's completely fine. So we are here. Yeah, and I'd just say something that kind of echoes what's already been said, but it's from a faculty standpoint. Um, I've been here, this is my fourth year now. Um, before this, I was at another small liberal arts college and uh, I was there as a visiting professor and my time there, I was there for two years and my time there really kind of convinced me that the liberal arts environment was the right fit for me. Um, and when I was applying to places, uh, I'll never forget, I went to a big state school down south and interviewed and the interview was going fine and good. And they were trying to sell me on the location and they brought me to their new lecture hall and their new lecture hall was this massive auditorium that fit a thousand students and in order to get in students had to go through a turnstile kind of like Disneyland and they had to swipe their ID in order to get in and that card swipe is how attendance was taken and then they said it's so great because you don't have to worry because if they leave early they have to swipe their card also and you'll know and they're talking to me as if this is a good selling point of the selling feature of the university. And I thought, you're talking to the wrong guy here. Um, and I flew directly from Louisiana to Gettysburg. And my first uh, foot on campus, they pointed out to a building that looks like Hogwarts. And they said, that's where your office is gonna be. And then they showed me the classrooms of about you know, 25 to 30 students. And it was just love at first sight for me. And it's been a really great fit, in my opinion. I think it speaks to my strong suits and I've loved every minute of it. So from a faculty standpoint, it's equally as, re as rewarding. And because you did put Ben on the spot first, I am gonna turn it back over to him because I think he has a little bit more advice that he wants to share and then I will close us out. Yeah, now that I've had five or 10 minutes to sit here and think about it, I maybe came up with this. No, I would just say, you know, to the high school seniors and those watching, uh, having just gone through an admissions cycle where I wasn't quite sure what I was looking for myself, uh, I would just say to you that you should trust the process of a college admissions and law school admissions when the time comes and cast a wide net and ask questions and just follow your gut. And my sense is that for most people, it works out. My sister is a freshman in college this year, not at Gettysburg. Um, and you know, having just followed her process and followed my own law school process and thinking back to, to kind of the college admissions process, it can be nerve wracking, especially if you're not sold on what you're looking for, uh, knowing exactly what you're looking for. But the more that you can just kind of get yourself comfortable with a place or an institution. I think that's kind of the key to success in, in my estimation. And for me and for all of us here, that turned out to be Gettysburg, but whether that turns out to be Gettysburg or somewhere else, you know, find somewhere where you'll be comfortable and that you uh, are excited about. And, you know, there's my actual advice. That was perfect. Thank you. And thank you for joining us from England. It was very special to have you with us. And thank you all.